So hello everyone, um, I'm Wolf Honore, and today I'm going to talk about um, Adore, which is a novel abstraction for reasoning about um, distributed systems. And in particular, I'll show how we were able to use it to complete the first safety proof in Coq of a consensus protocol with a generic reconfiguration scheme. So first, just a little background on why this is an important but challenging problem. Consensus protocols like Paxos and Raft are used everywhere from um, databases to distributed file systems and blockchains. That's because consensus is all about reaching agreement. Um, so if we have some set of servers implementing a distributed state machine like this, then they might temporarily disagree about some values towards the tail of their log, but we can still provide the illusion that there's a single state by just being careful to only expose the part of the log that enough servers called a quorum agree on. So this agreed upon part is said to be committed, and the safety of consensus says essentially that this committed part is um, locked in. It can only ever be extended, never replaced. So proving the safety of consensus can be quite challenging, but it's a well-studied area with lots of interesting approaches. However, in the real world, um, it often requires some additional uh, extensions that can further complicate matters. One such extension is reconfiguration, which is the process by which the set of participating servers can change if, say, one crashes or needs to be updated. Um, there are many ways of doing this, but one class that we're especially interested in is hot reconfiguration, where this set of participants changes dynamically by leveraging the log replication mechanism. And uh, this can be very efficient, but it also creates some additional complexity because now we have this circularity where consensus depends on the current configuration, but the configuration is itself being managed by um, consensus. So that creates uh, some deep implications for the safety argument that can be fairly difficult for even experts to fully grasp. For example, the designer of the RAF protocol proposed a hot reconfiguration algorithm, um, but a year later a critical safety bug was found with it, and a fix was eventually proposed, but it's clear that without a rigorous proof, we can never really have complete confidence in the safety of these reconfigurable consensus protocols. So that's why it's interesting that despite its importance, um, before ours, there are no complete safety proofs that we're aware of that really fully address reconfiguration. And I claim that's at least partly because without the right abstraction, it can be fairly difficult for these existing proofs to scale with the extra complexity from reconfiguration. With the door, we were able to do this because it gives a new way of looking at consensus that captures the core behaviors but abstracts away a lot of the extraneous details. So to show the usefulness of this approach, we proved several properties about it in Coq. One is, like I said, the safety property that I mentioned earlier, which, as I said, is the first one to handle um, hot reconfiguration. And in fact, this proof holds for many variants of reconfiguration because we were able to parameterize certain details of it that can then be instantiated in different ways. And then to show that this model faithfully models real protocols, we also proved that a more standard specification of a RAF-like protocol refines this model. And then finally, we use Cox support for extraction to OCaml to produce a verified executable version of this. So I won't have time to cover all of these points in detail, but I'll refer you to the paper for more if you're interested. So before I discuss why I think Adore is the right abstraction for consensus, I'll briefly consider some of the alternative abstractions. Network-based abstractions model the system as a set of servers communicating over some unreliable channels. Um, so for example, you might have a case like this where S1 and S2 temporarily disagree about their last log entry, and then even after S2 manages to replicate its entry to S3, S1 still sees a different entry because of network failures. So this is very similar to how real systems behave, so the advantage of that is it gives us confidence that anything we prove about this model is probably true of the implementation as well, but it means that we inherit a lot of these complexities that come from implementation details that are mostly independent of the actual core safety that we're trying to prove. Um, if we think about the goal of consensus, then really the purpose is to provide this illusion of a single state, which is what state machine replication, or SMR, does. Here we model the system just as a single log that atomically grows from committed, one committed state to another without any of these internal consistencies being exposed. And that's great for building more complex applications, but it's too abstract for reasoning about something like reconfiguration, which happens more under the hood. Um, if we slightly open this black box, we can get the Atomic Distributed Object, or ADO model, which we presented at last year's UFSLA. And the main difference here is we're still modeling the system as a single atomic object, but in addition to the committed states, we also have these branches, um, and we call this data structure a cache tree. And these branches represent the 
temporarily uncommitted states. So we can, like with the network model, we can observe these points where C and D are uncommitted, and then D is eventually committed, but like SMR, um, the internal network communication steps are all hidden, and it's just an atomic step. So this is still a bit too abstract for reconfiguration, but this idea of modeling these inconsistent states with a tree will turn out to be very useful. So to recap, reconfiguration is a very important but difficult problem. So we want an abstraction that makes it as easy as possible to reason about so we can prove its safety. This is technically possible to do with network-based models, but it's fairly complex because of how they mix um, concerns from different abstraction levels. And SMR and ADO are too abstract to handle it, but they propose an interesting idea with this atomic object model. So next we'll see how Ador finds a middle ground by keeping this atomic object idea, but reintroducing some lower level details. Um, so like the ADO model, Ador models the system as a cache tree. Um, but where the Ador ca ADO cache tree only keeps track of methods and whether or not they're committed, Ador adds some additional metadata. So there are four types of caches. There's E caches, C caches, M caches, and R caches, and each one is created by a particular operation. M caches represent potentially uncommitted methods and are created by the invoke operation, which corresponds roughly to a local log update in Paxos or Raft. E caches and C caches are sort of logical markers that represent how in agreement the servers are at various points. E caches are created by the pull operation, which corresponds to a prepare or election phase. And C caches are created by push, which is like the accept or commit phase. R caches are very similar to M caches, but are used for reconfiguration, and we'll come back to them in a couple slides. Every cache is associated with a logical timestamp, which is used to assign them a total order. And additionally, E caches and C caches have a set of voters, which represent servers that gave their approval for the creation of that cache. So by arranging these caches into a tree, we can get a nice um, summary of the whole history of the system. So I'll show an example of what that looks like now. So as I said, poll models the election phase, which for Raft means the leader um, broadcasts its current log to the other servers. They perform some local comparisons to decide if they want to vote for it, and then if they do, they send back their votes. In Adore, this whole thing is modeled just as a single operation called pull that either succeeds or fails. And if it succeeds, it creates an e-cache, which marks the start of this new leader's term. Um, so notice that there's no corresponding entry for the e-cache in the, any of the raft logs, which is what I mean about it being a logical marker. However, it's a very useful marker because it indicates that at this point, this leader has the most recent state among at least a quorum of voters. And then once elected, leaders can then append new methods to their logs, and likewise in Ador, the leader can extend its current branch with a new mcache. So here we're just maintaining this um, correspondence between the leader's log and its current branch. Then to commit this new method in Raft, the leader has to once again broadcast its log, the other servers perform some more local comparisons, and may um, update their own logs. And if they do, a quorum of them do this, then the method is said to be committed. In Ador, this is done by the push operation, which again is just an atomic decision that either succeeds or fails. And if it succeeds, it creates a C cache. And this is a checkpoint that now all of the M caches along this branch are committed and agreed upon by at least a quorum of voters. So under good conditions, the tree might just continue to grow linearly like this. So another leader could be elected and it can propose more methods and so on. However, things can look a little different if we start to consider failures. So if, for example, this second leader, S2, fails, then um, S1 might become the leader again. Um, but note that since method V is not committed yet on the upper branch, S1 um, is not aware of it. So instead, its E cache follows the last cache that it is aware of, which is the C cache, creating this second branch. S1 can then propose its own methods and may eventually commit it. And at this point, the safety property of a door says that there can never be a C cache placed on the upper branch with method B. Um, and so by requiring that all C caches appear on just a single path through the tree, we're also requiring that there's a common sequence of M caches that at least the quorum servers agree on. So now let's see how reconfiguration fits into all of this. Um, Adore's reconfiguration scheme is based on a generalized version of that raft one that I mentioned earlier, and that's because we were interested to see if we could prove that the proposed fix for that safety bug was actually correct. Um, so it basically works by leaders can propose a special command containing a new configuration, and in Adore we should represent that with an R cache, which is very similar to an M cache, but with the important distinction that this new um, configuration is used as soon as it enters the, the server's log without waiting for it to be committed. 
So that's a sort of speculative behavior that means that configuration changes can happen more quickly, but it also means we have to be very careful not to break any safety guarantees. So there are three rules that have to be followed. The first rule is that um, the old and new configurations have to have overlapping quorums, by which I mean if you pick any quorum from each configuration, they have to have at least one server in common. Uh, the second rule says that before proposing a new configuration, you have to first commit all of the pending reconfigurations on your branch. And the third rule says that when a new leader is elected, before proposing a new configuration, it has to first commit some other method um, using the original configuration. And so the purpose of these rules is mostly to maintain this invariant that consecutive e-caches and c-caches have overlapping sets of voters, which is important to assign them a total order and maintain consistency. Um, so we can see how the first two rules do this. The first rule just says that consecutive quorums have to overlap, and the second rule makes sure that you can't change the configuration too quickly without committing something in between. The third rule is the most subtle and was actually omitted from the initial raft version, which is what led to that safety bug. So I can walk through an example of how that can happen. Um, if we consider this state where we have a configuration of S1 through S4, and say S1 is the leader, and it proposes some new configuration that removes S4 but then it doesn't commit it and say S2 then becomes elected leader and it proposes its own configuration removing S3 instead. S2 might then uh, commit this and at this point S1 could be elected a leader again using its proposed but uncommitted configuration and at this point we're in trouble because it can now commit that configuration and we've broken safety because we have C caches on two different branches. So if instead we had rule three, this would all be avoided because before proposing its new configuration, S2 would have had to first commit something using the original configuration. And that in turn would have blocked S1 from being elected with its pending reconfiguration. Reconfig um, so really the point of rule three is to invalidate these pending configurations like S1s whenever a new leader is elected. So now let's look at one other uh, important invariant in the safety proof to see how Adore makes it easy to reason about. Um, this invariant is that elections have to have unique timestamps. Um, and without, uh, without reconfiguration, this isn't too hard to show because we know that every election has to have a quorum of voters, and if they're all quorums of the same configuration, they have to overlap, so there's a common voter, and a server is not allowed to vote for the same timestamp twice. But um, with reconfiguration, we no longer are guaranteed that these quorums overlap, so how do we maintain this property? Well, if we consider the different options, if there are no R caches on either of these branches, then we know that the configurations are the same, so their quorums overlap and we're done. If instead there's only one R cache, we know by rule one that the quorums still overlap, so we're okay. And then for the other cases, we can use rule two and three to show that those situations are impossible. So we know that rule two says you can't have two R caches in a row, and rule three says if there's an R cache on each branch, then there also has to be a C cache along one of these branches, which will um, create a contradiction. So we're essentially doing induction here over the number of reconfigurations in the tree. And in the paper, we actually formalized this into a metric called RDIST. Um, but the main thing I want you to notice here is just how naturally this, this style of reasoning comes from using this abstraction. It's really an, an, a nice example of where just having the right abstraction makes it the solution to a problem much clearer. So in addition to this safety proof, there are some other exciting contributions that I only have time to briefly touch on here, but you can find more details in the paper. One of these is, like I mentioned, the reconfiguration scheme we use is actually quite general. And that's because we realized um, all you really need for the scheme to guarantee is that consecutive quorums overlap, and there are lots of implementations that can do that. So we can perform the safety proof once and for all with a very generalized, parameterized version of this scheme, and then instantiate it and get um, many variants of the safety proof almost for free. Uh, so then now that we have this generic safety proof, you might still be wondering, what does this mean about it, the safety of a concrete protocol like Paxos or Raft? And for that, we can use refinement to show that um, Adora's safety implies Raft safety. And this is also generic with respect to that reconfiguration scheme. And finally, we can use Cox support for extraction to OCaml to produce um, verified executable versions of these protocols. So that really shows that this isn't just an abstract model for verification, we can produce practical systems as well. So in conclusion, Adore is a novel protocol level abstraction for reasoning about consensus, and in particular we used it to complete the first safety proof of a um, consensus protocol with hot reconfiguration. Um, however, despite our focus on reconfiguration here, 
That's really just one example of where a door can be useful. It's a very flexible abstraction and could be used for all sorts of other extensions or properties like uh, liveness, for example. So the paper goes into much more details about the formal specifics of the model, as well as the refinement proof and the generic um, reconfiguration scheme. So I encourage you to read that as well if you're interested. Thank you for listening. Yeah, let's thank the speaker. My understanding is that OCaml is a garbage collected language, correct? So I was wondering if it is possible to extract Rust code from your verified proof artifact. That might be easier to actually deploy in a realistic setting? Um, yes, so uh, Coq, as far as I know, does not natively support just ex direct extraction to Rust, um, but that would be, it would be very interesting to look at that sort of thing where you can um, produce ver verified executable implementations in other languages like that. Um, I think there are projects that would make that sort of thing possible. Um, we just, we chose OCaml here because it's sort of the, the easiest path. You can just um, take your cock specification and then directly produce almost just through syntactic translation OCaml code. Um, but yeah, something like Rust or C would, would be definitely preferable if we were really wanted to, to produce um, like, yeah, efficient code. Okay, other questions? So actually, in the meantime, I had a question. So in your abstraction, you define a set of conditions which are sufficient to guarantee the, the correctness of the reconfiguration part. So I was wondering, like, uh, are they necessary also as well, or like how generic they are in some sense? Are you referring to the, the, the rules that I mentioned for reconfiguration? Um, so are they, are they necessary for this? I, I would, th I think we, we have not proved that they are, that they all are necessary, but I would expect at least several of them are. So the first one, I think that consecutive quorums have to overlap. I think that pretty much has to be true. Um, probably the, the third one I think is, that's only necessary because we're doing the speculative thing where we're not waiting for the new configuration to be committed. Um, so it's important that we be able to kind of invalidate pending ones. Um, so yes, I guess in summary, yeah, we don't have a, a, a formal proof that these are strictly necessary, but my intuition is that they probably are, at least given this um, type of reconfiguration we're doing. Let me see. Okay, are there other questions? Okay, if not, let's spec Wolf and uh, let's thank uh, Wolf and then uh, let's go to lunch.